Oh, I, didn't, I don't have my clock started. Okay, so sit up straight. Sit evenly on your pelvis. So notice if there's any adjustment you could make that would make your pelvis more even. So it's not always, uh, you know, grabbing the buttocks and moving them back or turning the thighs in or out. Um, but see if you can figure out where even is on your pelvis. Then take your fingertips behind, press your hands down, lengthen up through your side waist and side chest. Move your arm bones back, be broad across your collarbones here. Keep that, release your hands to your thighs and close your eyes. Descend your thighs. Be on the midpoint of your sitting bone, so you're neither leaning forward nor back. From that even and equal way of your sitting bones, like up through the front of your body, through the sides of your body, through the back of your body. Press your shoulder blades into your back ribs to lift your chest. Soften your neck and throat. Release your jaw. Rest your tongue into the base of your mouth. Take slow, even breaths. And then gently open your eyes. Come over to child's pose. Take your big toes together, your knees apart. Push your hips back on your heels. And as you extend your arms forward. Send your hips down further and further. Rest your forehead. Press your hands into the floor as you turn your upper arms out. And then come up to your hands and knees. Tuck your toes underneath, lift your hips high, come into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now we're facing the butt. Press your 
Press your hands under the floor, turn your upper arms out. Press your thighs back and looking back at your knees, see if they're looking in the same direction. And your toes pointing in the same direction. So one foot's not turned out more than the other, or more likely your heels are moving rather than the ball of your foot. Let's see if there's a slight movement you can make in the hip to get the toes and the knees pointing forward. As you press your hands down, and turn your upper arms out. Lengthen the sides of your torso. Lengthen the sides of your waist. Walk your hands back towards your feet and hold forward. So notice if, uh, now this happens to me, if one leg turned out when you walked back. So, Look at your knees again and move from the hip. Notice if you're leaning forward or back. Chances are you're not leaning forward, but you might be. Make sure there's even weight between the ball of the foot and the heel. Then bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, come all the way up. Okay, you can do this next thing, um, standing or sitting. I'm going to show it sitting because it's a little easier for you guys to see. So you're going to place a block in your hand. And you want it so that you're not gripping the block. You can also use your book here. So if you have a book. And then you're gonna uh, pretend that you're a waiter, right? So you're waiting tables and you're holding this uh, brick or block like this. Now you're gonna take it by your body and back. Yes, but you have to keep your hand facing the ceiling. You have to move your body probably to keep the hand facing the ceiling. That's where we're going next, Jaya. So you come down and then, whoops, <laughs> and up, and up. Um, around. Yep. Yes, the, the Kathy, those books might have been too big for this one. They'll be better for the foot one. Ah. All right, switch hands. So first, just try the underneath and back. Underneath the armpit and forward. One arm will be dumber than the other. Or less adept. Yeah. 
And then when you go back, bring it around and up. Back, bring it around and up. Up, bring it around and back, up. Turn and then back. All right. So the next is dos. So this was all, all this kind of stuff. I mean, I've seen carrier worker work this way with the blocks, um, but uh, my brother, who's a, a ninja warrior, I can't talk and do this at the same time, um, showed this broom challenge, where if you do it with your feet. But a lot of what this teaches you is proprioception, whoa. <laughs> okay, so you can just watch the second one for a second. And I'm gonna lie with my head facing the camera. And the first thing you're gonna do is just have one leg down, one leg up, like this. And you're gonna move the leg up and down. And after we do that for a while, now here's where you'll have to be careful, Marsha. We're gonna, because we're not using a strap. So we're just taking the leg this way, and then this way, and then we're gonna go down and over, and down and up. So that would be the basic formula, all right? So lie on your back. And then lift your leg up. So your left leg, or whatever leg is pressing into the floor and your right leg is up. And now move the leg down and up like you're doing a uh, leg lifts with one leg. Now with it up, take it over to the side, to the right out and then back to the center and to the left. But keep the left leg on the floor. Don't keep on turning like a twist. So we're going to go right, left, like windshield wipers. All right, then bring it back to the center. Now you're going to go right, down, left, up. So you're going clockwise. Attempt to keep both legs straight. Now go counterclockwise. And then back to the center. All right, switch legs. Press your right leg into the floor, lift your left leg up. Now up and down, so towards your head, towards your foot. And then bring it to the center. Now towards the left. So open first. And then to the right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Center. All right. 
Now left foot, right head. So counterclockwise, left foot, right head. Left foot, right head. Now switch, right foot, left head, right foot, left head, right foot, left head. Really set that. So hopefully you feel something working. Okay, now is the time for the children's book, if you have the children's book. It's, it's wider, it's firm. Uh, I've noticed that this is a, a shiny paperback. It kind of has some stick to it. Not a lot. But I'm gonna place that on my foot and point the bottom of my foot towards the ceiling. Yeah, you can bend the other leg. So don't worry about the other leg. All right, especially if it gets you closer, uh, so it gets your uh, right leg closer to your head. All right. <laughs> All right, now your foot has to continue to face the ceiling. Go slowly and bring it down and up towards your head. Down towards the other foot and up towards the head. Down towards the foot, up towards the head. All right, get back on there. All right, now you're gonna take it out to the right. So the foot has to continue to face the ceiling and then back to the center and to the left. You won't be able to go as far as you did earlier. And to the center, and to the right, and to the center, and to the left, and to the center. All right, so right, foot, left, go slowly, head, right, foot, Left, head, switch directions. Left, foot, right, head, left, foot, right, head. Switch feet. In this one, you can't talk, well, I can't hear you. So I'm just gonna say that you're all celebrating the fun of this. So you can bend your right leg if you want. First, just balance it on your left leg. And then move it towards the right foot. And your left head. <laughs> Down towards your foot. Up towards your head. Take your foot. See how far you can go without dropping. Towards your head. One more. Towards your foot. And towards your head. And you'll notice when I take it out to the side, the left side, you can see how the foot has to uh, or technically the ankle, has to move. And you can see, so you're going back and forth like a bunch of levers. You can see how your foot would have to move in the different standing poses. So this is like a twist. If it goes across the body, and then it's like a lateral pose uh, over to the left. All right, so now we're gonna go to the left. Down towards the foot, to the 
right, towards the hand, left, down, right, hand, switch, right, down, left, hand, right, down, left, head. All right, now this is one I, really, I forgot to go on the other side, but you're gonna, if you know a happy baby where you bend your knee and you bring it near your armpit, you're gonna do that with the book. I'm showing it here. And then straighten that leg back up, bend it down towards the ground, and straighten that leg back up. One more, bend down towards the ground, and bring the leg back up, and then switch sides so we didn't do it on the other side. Now, obviously, if you want to make these harder, you go with a block. Um, so bend the right leg down. Bring it back up, bend it down, and back up, bend it down, and back up. Okay, now roll to your side and watch for a moment. I'm going to put a blanket out because I'm on tile. Okay, so this is closer to what um, my brother was doing or showing, really, with the uh, um, with the broom challenge. I don't know if it's an internet thing or not, but so anyway, so I bring it down, and you remember that arm weirdness we did? So the foot stays pointing towards the ceiling, and now you get to see my best side. As I turn over, wow. <laughs> so this is, this is, this is the silliness that I've been <laughs> working on this week. So down, flip, and then, ah, stay. You remember how you had to turn your, Arm up to the ceiling. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jack. So, anyway, give it a shot. I mean, it's just gonna fall on the floor. It's fun. Maybe your your dog will get. Um, I have a much harder time with that. Was showing with my right foot. I have a much harder time with my left foot because my left leg is dumb. So, I'll see if I can talk you through it. So, put it on the foot. You can pick and then bring the knee down. And then you kind of have to turn onto your side so that the knee is on the floor and the foot is facing the ceiling. Now the knee has to go towards the opposite foot a little bit and the other leg has to cross over the top. <laughs> And then once the other leg crosses over the top, you turn your belly towards the floor. And then you have to readjust so that you're uh, flat on the floor with your leg more or less parallel. Then the right leg has to come out, well in this case it's my right leg, the leg with the book. And uh, my other leg straightens, the leg without the book straightens. So I can turn over the straight leg side as I lift the right leg up and spin it around. <laughs> if this isn't the silliest thing you've ever done, <laughs> uh, let me, let me, uh, I'm going to unmute everybody and then, uh, okay, it's so I can, take a while. <laughs> it's going to take a while, yeah. So I've been practicing this a couple times this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy. Um, but it's a lot of fun. 
Right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna meet you guys again. What it really shows is the lack of mobility in the ankle. The ankle and the hip, right? And yeah. also your proprioception. Is your foot facing the ceiling? Yeah, but for the foot to face the ceiling, you gotta turn the ankle. Yeah. And it won't turn. <laughs> okay, so I'm muting everybody. Okay, I think I did. All right, so try the other foot, because um, one foot, it, it's almost like the brain doesn't reach that leg. And for me, and probably for other people, it's the leg that's always injured. It's the leg that, uh, like in your case, Karen, that turns out. It's, it's the leg that we don't know what to do with. So you bring it down to the floor and you turn on your side. The leg without it comes over and then you're on your belly. And then you drop the book. So what I was doing when I was practicing this, I probably did this for like 30, 45 minutes. <laughs> so is if I would drop the book, I would start over until I could reach a point where I could focus on where the book was and what I needed to do. And this is the hard part, this turning of the leg to get the foot back up to the ceiling. And then once that comes well, you can do it the other way. Turn the leg first, so you start with the straight leg rather than the bend. And it's just as hard the other way. <laughs> All right. So that'll give you something to do this week. <laughs> uh, probably a great thing to do with grandchildren. Um, and it really, uh, I think, it, it really is for your proprioception, you know, whether or not you can uh, get your hips to do that or get your ankles to do that. I mean, I think it's good for your ankles and your hips and such, but I think like knowing where everything is, is very important. All right, so after all that, come to downward facing dog and see if even that shoulder work, which wasn't nearly as difficult, um, see if that helped your downward facing dog. For me, I feel a lot of uh, openness in my hips. A lot of awareness there. For both the, uh, the thing we did without uh, our foot balancing on something and the uh, one where we balance something on the foot, um, they both have that advantage. But if you look, if your heels on the ground especially, but if you look back at your feet in downward facing dog, you'll see that they were like when you uh, had the book on your foot and you took it towards the opposite foot. So you took it down towards the floor. You have to, this is a strong ankle flexion. Uh, extension would be pointing your toes. It's in flexion. All right. Come up to standing. And then put some blocks or whatever you have up the back edge of your mat. Stand up right. So a few standing poses, not a whole lot. All right. Take your legs apart. Yeah. Now here, if you look at your ankles, 
They look like they did when they were out, like this, where the foot is facing the ceiling and this, this strong lift on the interior of the ankle. And then turn your right leg out. And now the foot is pointed, the, the right foot is pointed, but the left ankle still has to lift up. Take your right hand down to the brick, your left arm up, which you teach your asana, or to your ankle or wherever. Look down. See if your knee is in line with your toes on the front leg, the leg you can see. You might be able to see yourself well enough in the uh, video, but um, maybe not. So tired, you're hyperextending your shin. You should have a block or a chair behind you. So, so that you're not pushing your shin into the floor. So like this, you push your shin down. So that's why I don't like this. Uh, that's why I prefer to use blocks for myself and others, is this pushes your shin down, which is great if you bend your knee. But if your leg is straight, then you're pushing those bones towards the floor and you're helping any kind of hyperextension. Yeah, right. press through your left leg, inhale, come up. Turn your right leg in, turn your left leg out. Look here. See if your knee is lined up with your toes. If it is, keep it. If not, fix it. Then exhale, bring your left arm down, right arm up. All right. So notice what the ankles have to do in this pose. So this front ankle tends to shorten right at the back of the ankle where the Achilles tendon is. So that's like pointing the foot. The back foot is still at that uh, facing the ceiling pose. The other thing you can do if uh, you have pretty good muscle awareness is you can lift the calf towards the ceiling. So you really have to press down with the toes of the foot to lift the calf. Then press through your right foot, inhale, come up, turn your toes to the front. All right, bring your feet together. All right, I'm going to show from the side. So we're going to do Ichkatasana, chair pose. And then I want you to see how far the ankles can bend this way. So they're bending forward. So hands on the hips, legs together. The legs together help to keep your knees in alignment. And actually for most of us, the heels could be a little bit apart. And the reason for that is uh, feet are kind of frequently wedge shaped. They're not straight. Some people have straighter feet. Mine are extremely wedge shaped. So I take the heels a little bit apart and the knees will line up. All right, with your hands on your hips, bend your knees. All right, so Chai, your knees are coming together with your feet apart. So I want, can you put a block between your knees? And I'm going to just look, um, let's see if I can, okay, uh, yeah, that's better. Yes, now bend down, Taya. Um, now let's see, Kathy, I'm going to just, the only way I can make you big is if I spotlight you, so there you are. Okay, I, that'll work. 
Yeah, you guys can just stay there, right? While I do all this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that work. That looks good. Okay, come back up. All right. So in this pose, the ankles really have to flex. This pose and it's to me it's neighbor pose. So have your feet um, about two inches apart. We don't see you. Oh, sorry. That was my fault. Sorry, Karen. I was still. Uh, there we go. Is that better? Can you see me now? You can just do a thumbs up. Yeah. So have your feet about hip width apart and squat down. And you see this strong bend in the ankle here. And then back up. And squat. And back up. And squat. So if you need something under your heels, you can take it because you can't flex your ankles this much. So maybe something like this. And stand back up and squat. And stand back up. All right. Now, if you needed the Support, keep the support. If not, stand ahead of the support. Feet um, inch or two apart, just so that your knees can continue to face forward. Place your hands on your hips. And then start to do the same squat, but stop. When your, your legs are starting to burn, that's, that's a good place to stop. Pull your abdomen back, tuck your buttocks under, and lift your chest. Try to keep your, your legs burning and your chest upright. And then stand back up. All right. So that's the other um, ankle position that I worked on. Now, I kind of want to show the last ankle position. So we did pointed, flex, and then I always forget which one's everted and inverted, but anyway, we did it so that in this position, where they're like this, but we haven't done it where the other side comes up a little more, and that is done in a twisting pose. So uh, take two blocks towards the front edge of your mat and step your right foot forward and your left foot back. So we're, so we're going to start from Corpo Tanasana and go into Revolve Triangle. So, but I want you to focus on your feet rather than the final pose, right? So with your right foot forward and your left foot back, the back foot, the inner ankle has to lift. But on the front foot, that one wants almost naturally because you want to roll to the little toe side of your foot. So keep the weight on the big toe side of your foot as if you were going across the body like we did earlier. And then keep your left hand down and lift your right arm up. So you should be in a twist now. Yes. So if your right arm won't go above your left arm, you can either have a taller block under your left arm, or you can keep your right arm on your hip. Or a chair works great. And then notice how your front foot always wants to roll out to the little toe side. Right? So you have to push down on the big toe side to keep that ankle actually level, but it's the same action as when we took the block, come back up, across the bottom. So if we had a block on our foot, when we took it, well, the block's a lot harder, by the way. We took it across, we had to push more with the big toe side of the foot to get the same result as we did here. All right. 
So switch sides. Left leg forward, right leg back. We're about to not to begin. Line up your left knee with your left toes and your right knee with your right toes, although the toes tend to point a little further out than the knee. All right. So once everything's lined up, press down strongly with your left big toe. Take your left hand to your hip and turn to the left. Notice how you want to roll out to the little toe side of the foot. Avoid that. You can take your left arm up, but you want to focus on what the ankle does in this pose. And bring your left arm down, step your feet together, and come up. Alright, so I want to do one more standing pose. I always like to throw in a balance pose. Um, so we're going to do Arjandrasana. And you can use a brick for Trikonasana, but I'll show real quick. So I'll come into Trikonasana, but when you come into Arjandrasana, you can just watch for a minute. I want you to keep your chest facing forward. So some of you are going towards the side, so I can't say face the screen, but if you were facing this way, you're going to continue to face the uh, long edge of your mat. So watch, so you look where you're going, hand to the floor. I want everyone's hand on the floor rather than a block. All right. Then the tendency is to turn towards the floor because you're looking at the floor. So here at this point, <laughs> turn, then keep that turn as you lift the back leg up and then straighten the leg. All right? So, starting with your legs and arms apart. You can use the wall for sure. Turn your right leg up. Take your right hand down to the block or the shin or rubber. All right. So, you're in Trikonasana. Take your left hand to your hip. Turn your chest to face, I think everyone's facing forward. So turn your chest to face the camera. Bend your front leg, step your back leg in, and take your right hand to the floor. And stop there for a second. Turn your, so with your right hand on the floor, your left leg on the floor, turn towards the camera. Yes. Then, Lift just the back leg. Keep the front leg bent. All right, turn towards the camera. Then all you do is straighten the front leg. And when I uh, took a class where they taught it this way, I found it was easier to balance. Because you're now moving your chest over your hip, which causes Fluctuations. All right, then bend the front leg, reach back with the back leg and come back to Trikonasana. Press through the left heel, inhale, come up. All right, and then move to the other side. Turn your left leg out. Lift your arms up. With an exhalation, bring your left arm back. Take your right hand to your hip. Rotate your chest towards the camera. Keep that. Just look ahead. Try to keep your chest open and you bend your front leg and step your back leg in. Take your left hand to the little toe side of your foot. And then here, turn towards the camera. Keep facing the camera as you lift your back leg. The front leg is bent. Keep facing towards the camera as you straighten the bottom leg. Yeah, and if you want to lift that top arm up, that's fine. And then bend. Uh, this is your left leg. Reach back with your right. 
Trikonasana. Press through your right foot. Inhale, come up. All right. Keep your legs wide. With an exhalation, pull forward. Sarana Pajanasana, you might need to take your legs a little further apart. Bend your elbows. Rest your head towards the floor. Keep your inner ankles lifted. Soften your breath, slow down your breathing, just in case you're breathing more deeply. Walk your hands forward. Place your hands on your hips. Inhale, come up. All right. So option one is to have your head on something, same pose. So it might look like this. You're gonna hold your ankles or place your hands on your hips, but you want your head down into something. So, like this. All right. Option two is true shasana. So, headstand. Pick what you're going to do. So, make sure your head is on something <laughs> in whatever pose you're in. So, the reason I want you to try having, uh, doing this pose rather than the shoulder strength pose that we normally do as an option um, is I want you to feel the pressure on your head and you don't always, you don't feel that with the um, shoulder straight one. Alright, so if you're doing Prasarana Padasanasana, why do you forward bend? You're going to take your legs wide and put your head on the ground, on a chair, on a stack of blankets, a bolster. Otherwise, you're going to go up into headstand. Yeah. Okay, that, that bolster looks a little high for you. Do you have something in between or not? Yeah, maybe a couple folded blankets. Yeah, that looks better. Maybe a little hard on your hamstrings. Uh. Maybe you can straighten your uh, left leg a little. Against your left, I can't tell. Uh, Marsha, take your ribs back. I like that view though, because it really helps me to see you from the side. Um, uh, Kathy, roll your thighs in a little bit. That's pretty much what I have a view of, so. All right, yes. Uh, and as those that are uh, doing the wide-legged forward bend, you might be there for a while and need to take some support out because your legs, so Ty, you might be able to take half a blanket out because your legs get, uh, they loosen up, right? So notice here, those in headstand, since we're talking about the ankles, that if you put your ankles together, or your heels together, you might feel like your knees point out to the sides. So if you keep the big toe base joints together and take the heels a little apart, at least for me, this makes my knees feel like they're pointing forward. Yeah, and when you've had enough of the 
For Sardaukaratanasana, you can do supported uh, dog pose. As in Sirsasana, press the upper arms down, lift your shoulders up your back, extend through your side waist and your side chest, extend through the inner thighs. So again, you can switch to supported dog pose. Uh, head support, but more like dog pose. For those three people that uh, don't have video on, that's perfectly okay. <laughs> just, uh, I'll just assume that you're doing some really awesome poses and one-arm handstands and such. So. All right, coming down from Shirshasana, press your forearms into the floor, lift your shoulder blades up to your back. Keep that as you bring your legs down. Those in dog pose can rest in child's pose now. Those in headstand can also rest in child's pose. All right, come up. So we're still working. I mean, all this stuff, I, I've been talking about the ankle, but all this stuff uh, is also strength building. A lot of that, that movement of the legs and the arms works on your core. So we're still doing strength during this Zoom time. So you can come up into handstand or L pose, feet on the wall, or the other way to work on strength is place your hands at the wall and lift one leg up. This is a different kind of strength, but just as hard, all right? So don't think you're being easy on yourself by choosing that one. So pick something to do and then do it. Yeah. For those that are lifting one leg up, roll that lifted leg thigh in. So don't let that hip come up. So that hip has to come down for both of you. So lower that hip down more. Roll it in, try to take the toes to point to the floor or even to the opposite leg. Yes, that's it. All right, um, up in the handstand. Which leg did I use? So whatever pose you're in, press your uh, inner hands down. So the base of the index finger is pressing the wall or the floor. All right. Make sure you switch legs, whether you're kicking up or you have one leg up. Yep. Let's see. Kathy, your toes are pointing out to the side. I don't know if you're going up into handstand. There you go. Yep, oh, you can do pincha, Marsha. Yeah, if you want to keep your, if you want to wrist, there we go. Ah, oh, two legs. There we go. Yep. Okay. Come down. Well, I think everyone's down actually. <laughs> it's a good time to say come down when everyone's already down. All right. 
Oh, look at that setup. All right. Now lie, uh, first lie on your belly. We have to do one of these, and then we can lie on our back. So if you need a little more support under your pelvis, take it. We're going to do Salvasana. So lie prone with your hands by your sides, palms up. Move your shoulder blades away from the floor. Well, I mean, move your shoulders away from the floor to bring your shoulder blades closer together. Then lift your legs, lift your arms, lift your chest. Come on, legs. Higher with you. Oh, I don't like to do that. So extend your fingertips towards your toes. Now this pose, the toes are pointed. So the ankle is extended. This is considered an extension when it moves away from the chest, front of the body. Flexion moves towards the front of the body. And exhale, come down. All right. One more. This time, interlock your hands behind your back. Extend your leg, lift your quadriceps, lift your chest, lift your legs, lift your arms. Move your knuckles towards your feet to lift your chest more. Lift from right uh, below the buttocks to lift your legs more. Change the interlock of your fingers. And then come down. Now remove uh, any extra support that you use for your hips and lie on your back. Lie supine with your knees bent for Chatush Padasana. For the first one, grab the sides of your sticky mat. All right. Now this is one where knees go wild. And feet go wild. So if we're going to focus on that, you want to put a brick between your feet like this, narrow brick, unless yours are super narrow, then you can do it maybe medium. And a brick between your knees. So now you can feel what your knees and your ankles are doing when you come up into the pose. So with your legs, squeeze the brick between your knees. The other ones will probably just stay there. Hold on to the sides of the sticky mat. If you don't have a brick, just go up. And then lift your hips. Roll your shoulders under, squeeze the brick, and lift your hips some more. And you'll notice, if you're like me, that it's really hard to squeeze that brick, the one between your knees. It feels like it's not far enough apart. Like the one between the feet is fine, but the one between the knees is uh, tenuous. Then come back down. Let's try it with a medium sized brick. So turn the brick on its side. If you have bricks, if not, then just take your knees a little further apart. Not a big deal. It's just easier because all bricks are the same. If you have two bricks, the chances are they're the same. So you can kind of, it just helps the feeling more. Bring your heels close to your buttocks. Hold on to the side of the sticky mat. Press your heels down, lift your hips. Roll your shoulders under. Depending on the width of your hips and your legs, this one might feel a little better. But it's still hard to squeeze the brick, the one between your knees. 
But you notice how that wakes up your legs to do that, maybe even a little bit in the abdomen. So as you press your inner feet down and squeeze the brick, lift your hips, keep your jaw and your throat soft. And then slowly lower your hips back down to the floor. All right, so now again, we have some options. I'm gonna show uh, two different options. Um, and well, and just talk about the third one. The third one is shoulder stand. So if you do shoulder stand, you know how to set up, go ahead and do that. The first option for supported bridge is to place a block under your hips like this. If you don't have a block and you happen to have a bolster, which I don't, I didn't bring in the room, or some blankets, you can fold a couple blankets, or if you have a nice thick bolster, and then put a block for your feet. We're going to assume I'm about that tall. I'm probably taller than that. We'll see. And the shoulders rest on the floor, a little taller. And the heels on the brick. This is a very gentle Sitchibandha Sarangasana. So this is one option. The brick under the pelvis is another option. Of course, without any brick is an option, but you're gonna get tired. And shoulder stand is an option. I don't even chair shoulder stand, sure. Um, I didn't bring my chair in today. I just have that really one. I can reach to understand that. Even I'm not that crazy. So I'm going to quickly set myself up for shoulder stand just to get a little one in. Maybe I'll do a longer one later. So if you're in whatever position you're in, your shoulders should be doing something. So, the shoulders and shoulder stand are supporting you. And Sifti Bandha, supported Sifti Bandha, they're pressing into the floor. And actually, in shoulder stand, they're kind of pressing into blankets. And Chuchush, they're rolling under. And all of them, they're actually rolling under too. So it's all the same shoulder position and all the same kind of calming effect on the nervous system. It's getting upside down. Opening the chest. For those in shoulder stand, you got a pretty good look at your knees and ankles, and you can play with those movements of the ankle. So you can bring your toes towards your shin. Dorsiflexion is actually one of the terms, or point your toes to the ceiling, plane reflection. Then try to bring the little toe side towards the ceiling and the big toe side towards the ceiling. You see all the different movements that the ankles can do. Those in regular bridge will press down more with the inner foot and remember the blocks between the knees. How you had to squeeze that in. Those in Sitivanda, on a bolster or blankets, or 
you have to roll your thighs in because the tendency is for them to roll out. That's true of almost everyone I've ever met, is that the legs tend to roll out. Soften your neck and throat. At least the sides of your face towards the floor. All right, those in bridge pose are going to lift their hips, remove the block, and slowly come down. Those in Sajibanda are going to slide towards the head side and rest your calves on the uh, bolster. So slide towards the head side. Those in shoulder stand are going to work that, their way down. And they will also slide towards their head side once they've come down and rest their hips on the bolster, the, the, the blankets. Then bend your knees in towards your chest, roll to your side, and come up. Now you can either take a, a block or a chair, bring it out in front of you, and rest your forehead on the block or chair. That's the same in uh, Upavista Konasana. So, keep your legs pressing down as you come forward. And then come back up and set up for Shavasana. So lie back, maybe have something under your head, something on your thighs, something for your calves to rest on. Find your favorite Shavasana. And rest there. Roll your shoulders under. Take your arms out to the sides, palms up. Press the weight of your body into the floor. With your jaw and neck relaxed, focus on the ingoings and outgoings of the breath.
Deepen your breath. Rest your hands on your ribs and on your abdomen. Bend your knees. Roll to your side. Support your head. Roll a little further to your side and use your hands to lift yourself back up to seated. Take your arms wide, lift your chest. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. Think of something you're grateful for. Namaste. Thank you for participating. And continuing on with the. Uh... Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. I hope you had fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one, the leg, leg is uh, hard. Pretty hard, yeah. <laughs> no, it was really it was interesting. It was super. Ugh. I okay. love the brick thing. <laughs> I've got a question, Mary, about Ardha Chandrasana. Okay. Okay. With my hips, anyway, or my body, um, if I try to put my hand on my floor, uh, my bending knee hip just goes out completely mm -hmm. and then like no no possibility of coming up okay this, uh, I, it could be because just the, the hip replacements are not flexible enough yeah yeah um it could be that you could just keep your leg bent i mean if you wanted to try keeping your hand on the floor okay so you could try that or you could come into it with a block i mean i'm just it was but um, I, I mean, the, I can feel the hip just go blah, like oh, that. Blocked. Yeah. So um, that means your leg is not externally rotated enough. Okay. So because when the, when the knee rotates out, it brings, I don't know if you can see, because I'm wearing black, but it brings that hip in, right? So right. If it's going this way, then that hip is going out, right? All right, but Jonathan explained to me something he learned with a senior teacher about hip replacements. Mm -hmm. Because I can do that. I mean, I can basically, can you see my leg? Uh-huh. I'm gonna I try it like so I can. I can do that, right? Okay. But the problem is then I hurt myself in the groin and my knee. Okay. If you told me in a hip replacement, I'm always going to be a little like that. Oh, interesting. Okay. See, I didn't know that. All right. That you can't force this to go in and the buttocks under uh -huh. too much because it will go. We won't hurt the hip replacement, but we'll hurt ourselves elsewhere. Oh, okay. So, and it seems to work since I've been doing it. What I have to stay firm here. I can't let it go. I have to stay firm. But I can't really, if I'm going to rotate, I can rotate a little bit. That's about as much as I can do without really sinking in. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that presents a problem when I put a lot of pressure on the hip, which happens when I bend and go down. Yeah. So you, for you, I mean, this was something that I did in James Murphy's class yesterday. Uh-huh. That's why I was like, oh, well, that worked for balance. But obviously, it didn't work for you. So um, for me, I maybe keep the height? Yeah, I would keep the height. So even a chair where you would Yeah, I'm eat. starting to see that with the hip replacements, I can do everything, but I really need to keep as much weight out of the hip joint as possible. So oh, I need okay. a Make sense? Yeah. Go yeah. OK. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Any other Thanks, questions? Thank you, Mitty. Good. Welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, bye, Mary. Bye.